What is a social dilemma? As the word dilemma suggests, it describes a difficult decision, one in which our own immediate interests clash with the collective long-term interest. Once you start looking for them, you find social dilemmas almost everywhere. Social dilemmas occur in romantic relationships when one partner faces the decision to take down the garbage or not. The immediate individual's interest says no. The collective long-term interest says yes. In team sport like football, each player faces the temptation of only focusing on the individual performance and ignore the team's interest. Another example is corruption. Imagine a traffic offender who gets stopped by the police for speeding. Instead of paying for the speeding ticket, the offender offers the police officer a bribe. Taking the bribe is in the short-term interest of the police officer, but it comes to cost for the society. Social dilemmas even occur on the global level. Think of the negotiations around CO2 emissions. Each country individually would be better off by letting its economy run free and pollute the environment. But collectively, these emissions threaten all countries. Social dilemmas are almost everywhere, and solving them is a huge challenge. One of the first scientific contributions to the topic was in 1968. Back then, Gerard Harding published an article called The Tragedy of the Commons. Imagine the following situation. Four fishers' families live on a lake. If each family fishes a maximum of 100 fishes per year, the fish stock will replenish. All families know this limitation. However, what typically happens if each family is free to decide how many fish to catch is that all or most of them take more than the 100 they are entitled to. The tragedy of the commons in a nutshell. If a group of people faces a social dilemma and can decide freely, they will act selfishly. We typically take more than our fair share and contribute less than the required minimum. Harding drew a grime image about our human nature. Luckily, there are other suggestions how to solve social dilemmas. Probably the most important one are institutional arrangement. An institutional arrangement describes all sorts of regulations, agreement, and punishment systems that help to solve social dilemmas. The couple might have an agreement about sharing the household task. Something like, I bring out the garbage and you clean the dishes. Sports teams typically have coaches who determine the tactics of the team to avoid every player trying to score as many goals as possible. In order to avoid bribe, payment law and control mechanisms are in place. And on the global level, organizations like the UN try to restrict each country's CO2 emissions. These institutional arrangements help to solve social dilemmas, but they are no silver bullet. There are always some people who cooperate while others don't. Why is it that some people adhere to the rules while others try to burn them? Social psychological research all across the world, and especially in our lab at the VU, had tried answering this question. Let us have a look at the three most important insights gained so far. First, there are personal differences. People differ in the level of cooperation they show in social dilemmas. This personality difference is called social value orientation. Two main categories of social value orientation exist. On one side, pro-social care to a great extent about the outcomes for others. On the other side, pro-selves are people who are primarily interested in their own outcomes. Pro-social tend to cooperate more and pro-self less in social dilemmas. The second important insight is trust. If you trust that the people involved in the social dilemma will cooperate, you are more likely to cooperate yourself. In a recent review on the subject, Paul van Langer shows that in order for trust to emerge and sustain, one person has to experience that trusting others pays off. Often, people are overly suspicious about others and their willingness to cooperate. But experiencing that others cooperate can make the distrustful trustful. The third important insight is the role of norms. Norms describe what people consider to be the normal thing to do in specific situations. Norms are especially important for social dilemma that involve large number of people. If a police officer considers accepting a bribe a normal practice, chances are he or she will accept a bribe. Niels Kobis and colleague from the VU show that when people face a social dilemma of corruption, this is exactly what happens. People are corrupt because they think everybody else is doing it. While some important insights have been gained, some crucial questions still remain unsolved. How can we change these norms? 
What undermines the trust? And when thinking about the global social dilemmas, like global warming, how can we reach global agreement that restrict each country's individual's interest for the collective good? Each of us can contribute to the solving social dilemmas. Knowing about social dilemmas already helps to recognize that there might be negative consequences of our own selfish behavior, consequences that don't appear right away but that will affect us and other people nonetheless.